Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Cole and Victoria discover a clue for finding Claire. Chelsea stopped over Adam's apartment after Connor's pediatrician called to inform them that their son was ready to communicate. Adam recalled that the previous week, Connor refused to speak with them. Chelsea encouraged Adam not to project his own desires into the conversation because Connor's recuperation was in its early stages. Adam questioned Chelsea whether she was talking about herself, not him. Chelsea responded, both. We can't botch this up. There's too much at stake. Chelsea suggested that she and Adam avoid certain words or topics that would trigger Connor's anxiety, as well as refrain from offering reassurances that might validate his anxieties. Adam maintained that he already knew the rules. Chelsea was outraged by Adam's condescending attitude. Adam took a step back and decided that he and Chelsea should work as a team to help Connor. Chelsea smiled as Connor appeared on the computer screen, telling her son that it was nice to see his face. Adam met Connor and inquired about his son's progress and the effectiveness of his therapy. A restrained Connor responded, It's going well, I suppose. I do not know. Chelsea calmly advised Connor to take his time, saying that they would be happy to listen whenever he was ready to speak. Connor appeared to relax as he told his parents that his primary care physician was pretty cool and understood his moods and disassociations, which he realized were his brain's method of keeping him from feeling frustrated when he failed to remember things. Chelsea explained to Connor that her brain frequently raced ahead, causing her to lose track of where she was going, and that slowing down and remaining in the now helped her. Adam asked Connor why it wasn't appropriate to check out on occasion. Connor indicated that doing so would allow him to succumb to his OCD, which would be misinterpreted as normal behavior. Adam recognized that he had misunderstood and would frequently demand clarification. Connor enthusiastically stated that he was back playing soccer and practicing drills with a friend named Mike. Adam inquired about Mike, but Connor reminded him of privacy regulations. Connor informed his parents he wanted to get better so he could return home. Adam reassured Connor that his parents loved him and would follow the doctor's advice. Connor responded, I love you guys, too. After the video conversation, Chelsea and Adam revealed they were unsure how to communicate with Connor. Adam lamented how difficult it was to continually worry about reassurances and disassociations. Chelsea reassured Adam that exposure and response therapy will help Connor recover in time. Adam described how, as a child, he instinctively shut things out, even wiping all memories of witnessing a guy die because he incorrectly believed he was to blame. Adam hated himself for Connor's troubles. Chelsea advised Adam that, while they did not fully grasp Connor's sickness, they should remain calm, strong, and united. Adam informed Chelsea that because Connor shared their DNA, he was likely experiencing some of the same dysfunctions as his parents. Chelsea, irritated, said that watching Connor suffer was awful, but she couldn't give in to her emotions since her son needed her. Adam questioned Chelsea why she wouldn't tell him how she felt inside without using buzzwords and to-do lists. Chelsea screamed, I am afraid, Adam. I am terrified, but I am afraid that if I fall into that pit of shame and guilt, I will be unable to crawl out. I want to kill the thing that is harming our son. I want to destroy it. Of course, I blame myself for my weakness and illness. Adam resented himself for missing a portion of Connor's life and for causing mayhem when he entered the picture. Chelsea collected herself, wiped her eyes, and stated she suffered from dark, intrusive thoughts that made her despise herself. Chelsea admitted that, while Connor's sickness differed from hers, it was natural for his parents to feel responsible. Adam stated that he wanted to reassure his son that everything would be fine and that he would lead a regular life. Chelsea and Adam agreed that they both wanted to be reassured every now and then that everything would be fine. Adam assured Chelsea that they could rely on each other whenever they felt anxious or worried. Chelsea said, I'd like that very much. Chelsea questioned Adam how he knew she needed to vent her feelings. Adam said he had to do the same thing. Chelsea confessed that she and Adam had learned to communicate differently than before. 
Adam agreed that it was best to speak like friends. Adam embraced Chelsea, and they agreed to rely on one another to aid Connor. Nikki entered the Abbott residence and hugged Jack. Nikki informed Jack she was relieved Harrison was back home. Jack gladly informed that a doctor had confirmed Harrison's physical health, however time will tell, regarding his emotional state. Jack observed that Harrison referred to Jordan as the mean lady and the witch. Nikki exclaimed, we were lucky to have rescued Harrison. Jack asked Nikki if she had heard anything about Claire. She responded, no, but Victoria got a call last night that she thought could have been Claire. Nikki apologized for thinking Claire might have been involved in the kidnapping. Jack admitted that he had doubts about Claire's ability to turn her life around so soon. Nikki once again hated herself for not completely supporting Victoria and Claire. Nikki berated herself for letting her frailty undermine her efforts to quit drinking. Jack told Nikki that she'd been through events that would have brought most people to their knees. Nikki added that she felt guilty since Claire and Harrison would not have been kidnapped if she hadn't done what she did. Summer overheard and asked what Nikki meant. Jack claimed that Nikki was not to blame for what had happened to Harrison because of the actions of a psychopath. Nikki responded, there is more to it than that. None of this would have occurred had I made different decisions. Claire wondered if we should even bother trying to save Jordan's life after he drank that poison in front of us. Summer was surprised to find that Claire had been willing to let her aunt die. Nikki revealed that Claire did not want anyone to go through Jordan's violence as she had, and that Claire had once again fallen prey to Jordan. Nikki yelled out that Jordan had survived because she had phoned paramedics. In her defense, Nikki admitted that she had no idea Jordan would flee, causing even more havoc for their family. Nikki claimed Summer had every cause to despise her. Jack, protective of Nikki, grabbed his keys and volunteered to accompany her to a support meeting. Nikki indicated that she met with Lauren to discuss Newman Media and promised to attend an AA meeting later. Summer told Nikki that she believed Jordan was solely responsible for Harrison's kidnapping. After Nikki left, Summer checked on Harrison and later told Jack that he was remained clingy, despite the fact that he had smiled when she promised to do all of his favorite things. Jack asked Summer how she felt about Nikki letting Jordan live. Summer responded, My son has woken up from nightmares twice since he has been home. Jack might be scarred for life. What should I respond when my grandmother tells me that it could have all been avoided? I wish she'd let Jordan die. Jack asked Summer not to discuss her sentiments with Nikki since Nikki was vulnerable and might easily be pushed over the brink. Summer decided not to say anything to Nikki. Lauren apologized to Nikki at Crimson Lights for everything she'd been through. Nikki groaned, realizing that one nightmare had followed another. Nikki expressed her hope that Claire was safe. Lauren echoed Nikki's wishes for Claire's rescue and encouraged her buddy to rest. Nikki acknowledged that she was desperate for sleep. Lauren insisted on Nikki, forgetting about work and going home to sleep. Lauren grabbed up her phone to send Victor a message, but Nikki insisted that Victor focus his efforts on finding Claire. Lauren agreed and made Nikki promise to go right home.